guys welcome to another video you've got mr everything english and i hope you are all doing well now in this video guys this is going to be hopefully the go-to video for you when it comes to language devices let's try to cover 25 language devices without me talking forever and ever and ever i'll try to keep it as short and as succinct as possible but at the same time making sure you are able to understand each and every language device now, before I begin, guys, as always, please click subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you are not doing already. OK, guys, let's begin. Number one, guys, let's look at pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy is when the weather or the atmosphere describes the mood. For example, if it's really, really sunny, people are normally really, really happy. And if it's raining, people are normally sad. Now, I said atmosphere as well. For example, a dark night. A dark night isn't the weather, but it is the atmosphere. And the dark night brings with it a evil and a nasty atmosphere. So guys, pathetic fallacy is when the weather or the atmosphere describes the mood. Number two, guys, let's look at personification. Personification is when an object, nope, let me rephrase that. Personification is when a non-human is given human qualities. So guys, I repeat, it's when a non-human is given human qualities. For example, this pen, the pen was sitting on the table. Sitting is the human feature. By me saying the pen is sitting on the table, I personified the pen. Number three, guys, let's go for simile. A simile is when you compare two things using like or as. For example, he was as strong as an ox. She was like a gazelle as she walked down the street. Comparing two things using like or as. A metaphor, guys, a metaphor is when you compare two things using is or are. That's the easiest way I can explain it. It's comparing two things using is or are. She is a monster. You are a monster. I've compared two things. There's no like, there's no as. Rather, I've said she is a monster. You are a monster. Number five, I believe, guys. Number five, extended metaphor. An extended metaphor is when you pick a metaphor, explain how, and basically turn it into a long metaphor. For example, life is a roller coaster. This is a metaphor because I've compared life to a roller coaster. Life is a roller coaster. Now, let's turn it into an extended metaphor by explaining how. Life is a roller coaster. You can never prepare for the ups and downs that it will bring. At the greatest heights, you will be at the greatest heights and at times it will crush. But every day is never the same. Just the way every turn on a roller coaster is never the same. I've taken the metaphor, life is a roller coaster, and I've basically explained how, making it a long, making it an extended metaphor. All right, guys, I'm going to make a note of the numbers because I'm going to forget. This is number six. Guys, number six, let's go for oxymoron. Oxymoron is when you have two opposite words side by side. For example, for example, for example, for example, the small giant. The small giant is an oxymoron because we have two opposite words. Because giants are not normally small. Next, number seven, guys, can we please look at juxtaposition? Juxtaposition is when you have two opposing, two opposite ideas. How do you create juxtaposition? You get an oxymoron and you explain how. For example, the small giant. This was a metaphor. Let me turn it into juxtaposition. The small giant was tiptoeing, trying to reach the top shelf. However, his small arms and puny fingers could, would not let him grab the jar of jam. I've turned that oxymoron into juxtaposition by explaining how the giant is small. Guide number eight, let's go for symbolism. Symbolism is when objects are linked and present meaning. For example, if I wore a face mask, you would all think COVID. If I bought a nappy, you would all think about a baby. If I bought popcorn, you might think of the movies. In Macbeth, the dagger links to death. In Romeo and Juliet, the balcony in the balcony scene could be a symbol for hierarchy. It's when objects can be linked to wider meaning. Guide number nine. Number nine is when words across an extract can be linked to one idea. It's called a semantic field. 
A semantic field, guys, is when words across an extract can be linked to one idea. For example, if I said a ring, gloves, punch, referee, these words link to the idea, link to the field of boxing. If I said two meters, hand sanitizer, face mask, these words link to the idea, to the field of coronavirus. Guys, number 10, number 10, number 10. Let's look at irony. Guys, irony, in my opinion, is one of the most worst explained language devices I've ever come across. Irony, guys, is very, very simple. Irony is when events in the text itself even surprises the characters. For example, when Mr. Burling in Act 3 of an Inspector Calls says, I'd give thousands, yes, thousands. This is irony because you would never have expected Mr. Burling to be offering money. When Scrooge changes in A Christmas Carol, this is irony because you would never have had expected Scrooge to change. And that is irony. Those are the first 10. Let's move guys to 11. I must write it down guys because I will forget. Number 11 guys, rhetorical question. This is what it says on the packaging. This is a question in a piece of writing that does not require an answer. How would you feel if, I don't know, how would you feel if you had to wear a face mask all day, for example? Number 12, number 12, number 12, number 12. This one guys, this you can find anywhere in any piece of writing. Hyperbole, 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 the answer is in the name. Hyperbole is when you hype, 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 is when you over exaggerate. So angry, I'm gonna kill him. I'm so hungry, I'm gonna eat everything. These are hyperbole because I'm over exaggerating. Number 12 guys, no, number 13, number 13. Let's go for assonance. Now guys, in the English language, we have vowels. The vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound. If I said, light the fire, I, I, light in I, sorry, I in light and I in fire. Light the fire is assonance. If I said, I'm too cool for school, ooh, 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 ooh. That's me repeating the vowel sound that is created by the letter O. All right, guys, number 14, number 14. This, I really hope I'm the right number. Number 14, guys, this is alliteration. Alliteration is when words in a row begin with the same letter. The big blue ball bounce down the road. B, 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 B. Can there be a, a word in between? Yes, that's fine. Can there be multiple words? Try to avoid it. But guys, alliteration essentially is when words in a row begin with the same letter. Number 15, guys, this is the best friend of iteration. This is sibilance. Sibilance is when words in a row begin with the S letter or have the S sound. For example, if I said the snake was slowly hissing, what was that? If I said the snake was slowly hissing, the snake was slowly hissing. That's better. Snake slowly hissing. I've repeated the S sound. This is called sibilance. Number 16, guys, euphemism. Euphemism, euphemism, euphemism. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Guys, euphemism, in the most easiest definition I can give you guys, is when you say something in a indirect manner. For example, if I said, guys, you've not got long left. I'm basically telling you that you're gonna die, but I'm saying it in a nice way. If I said, he passed away, he's not with us anymore. That's a nice way of me saying he's dead. These are all euphemisms. All right, boys and girls, number 17, I believe. Let's go for emotive language. Guys, emotive language is pretty straightforward. It's when the, it's when the writer makes the reader feel a particular emotion. This would be anger, happiness, sadness, whatever the emotion, as long as you feel it, guys, this is called emotive language. Number 18, guys, let's go for onomatopoeia. This is when words describe sounds. This is when words describe sounds. Crack, bang, boom, the car went zoom. These are all sounds. So when a word describes a sound, this is known as onomatopoeia. Number 19, let's go for rule of three. Rule of three, power of three, triplets, whatever your school calls it, it's the same thing. Guys, rule of three is when words or phrases in a row, when there's three words or phrases in a row to describe something. For example, I might say, this table is black, black, 
with four legs and is quite hard. Black with four legs and is quite hard. This is rule of three. Number 20 guys, we are on number 20. Let's talk about facts and stats. This is when the writer uses evidence to support what they are saying. If I said, I spoke to 70% of students who said that Mr. Everything English is the best teacher on YouTube. Actually, I think that'd be more than 95%, but you get what I mean guys. It's when I give facts and stats. By giving facts and stats, you make your writing more persuasive. You make it more believable. All right, I believe we're on number 21. Is that number 21? I think so. All right guys, number 21, let's look at plosives. Guys, plosives is the repetition of a harsh sound. Normally, it's the sounds that are created by letters like P, P, or D, D, or K, or T, T. It's the sound that's created by these letters. It's a harsh sound, and this is known as plosives. All right, guys, let's go for number 22, and let's talk about zoomorphism. All right, guys, zoomorphism. Guys, zoomorphism is when words, is when words, Guys, zoomorphism is when you give a person animal features. For example, if I said, um, John barked at me, I'm trying to say that John shouted at me, but by me saying that John barked, I'm giving John animal features of a dog. If you guys have seen The Jungle Book, Mowgli is a character who is soaking in zoomorphism because Mowgli is hanging out with the wolves, He's swinging off trees. This kid loves zoomorphism. It's a human being full of animal qualities. All right, guys, number 23. This is easy, guys. This is easy, but it counts as a language device. So why not? Guys, opinions. Use it in your writing. Every time you use opinions, these will count. Expert opinions, talk to people. These count as language devices. Number 24, guys. I believe we are number 24. Please talk about repetition. Repetition can be a language device and a structural device. Repetition, guys, is when the writer repeats a word or a phrase for effect. If you are talking about repetition as a language device, then you're talking about what actually is being repeated. If you're talking about repetition as a structural device, you're talking about where it's being repeated and why that is important. And finally, guys, I wanna end it with a bit of a broad one. I wanna talk about what do you do if you can't find any of the above 24? Then you pick out number 25. Number 25, guys, you pick out nouns, which are naming words. You pick out adjectives, which are describing words. You pick out verbs, which are doing words. And you pick out adverbs, which are words that describe the verb. Guys, those were 25 language devices. I hope the video isn't too long. I hope that I haven't bored you. Um, I hope you made notes as we were going along. Use them in your writing. First and foremost, learn them. There's loads more. That was just 25. I could have probably gone on to 50, but there's loads more language devices. But learn these 25. Use them in your writing. Use them in your English language exam. Use them in your English literature exam. Learn to pick them out in your text. As always, guys, and I mean this recently, especially, guys, thank you so much for your support. Um, it means a lot. It's been Mr. Everything English. Before I finish, if you still haven't pressed subscribe, just click the button, come on. Peace.